We're now going to look at some potential uh, security vulnerabilities in what we've already built, uh, and we're going to address them now. So we're going to look at uh, specifically at cross-site request forgery. Um, and if you're unaware of what cross-site request forgery is, it's basically the ability to define uh, parameters, perhaps either by get or post, um, and, a, a, and unwillingly um, a, a user who happens to be the victim will be... Um, not executing but using these parameters on a page without their knowledge now let me just give you an example of how this might work so we've built our register.php file we have validation we have um, the ability to re well not register a user yet but the potential ability to register a user now because of the way our input um, class works and even if we even if this wasn't how our input class worked a user can still allow another user without them knowing to post post or get variables to this um, or values to this page um, get is obviously a lot easier because in the case of that we can just pass in something like username equals Alex um, and you typically find this problem on things like uh, shopping carts where you could say for example um, add item equals item you know idea five or something like that um, and that would add that item to that user's basket and without cross-site re request forgery um, protection um, that can happen so unfortunately at the moment in our application we can actually define parameters in the URL which you know you might think oh, that's a little bit dodgy and it is so we need a way to generate some kind of token to only allow um, data from this form to be posted to that to, to you know to be posted to back back and interpreted by PHP. Now if you're unsure about how this works or that explanation is a little bit confusing, carry on and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll go through some of the uh, different aspects of this in a moment. So we want to negate the ability to be able to do this. So how are we going to be able to do that? What can we do? Well, what we're going to be doing is building a token class which allows us to first of all generate a token and second of all check if a token um, is valid and exists and then delete that token so we're going to be generating a token for each refresh of the page which only that page then knows so uh, another user somewhere else can't direct you to that page because the token will always be checked so again a little bit confusing but let's go ahead and start building this so the token needs to be generated inside of our form down here somewhere. So we need an input type of hidden with a name of token and a value of, well, this is where our class comes in. We need to be able to generate a token. So let's go ahead and build this token class. Now, we want a name of a token to be the same all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this to our um, our uh, our session uh, config so I'm going to say token uh, let's say token name equals token perfect so um, we'll just call it token or CRFS token whatever you want to call it so I'm going to call it token for now um, so what we can do now is um, create a, uh, a static method to generate a token for us and what we're going to do is we are going to return session put token md5 unique id sorry unique id and that's it but instead of token we're going to use config get session token name now we also have this session uh, uh, class as well that we need to build um, so we'll go ahead and build and we'll, we'll go ahead and build that now just so we um, you know we can we can use this um, so if we go over to session okay so we just we'll just build the put functionality because we don't want to worry about anything else just yet because we'll go on to we'll go on to work with sessions in a moment um, so let's go ahead and just um, uh, create a public static function put and we want to put something uh, a session name with a session value and all this is going to do is it's going to return dollar underscore session name 
and that's going to be equal to value. So it will return the value or it will return the value of the session as well. Uh, we don't need to do this, but we'll do it anyway. So let's go ahead and get rid of that for now. We'll address the session uh, class uh, in the next part. So now we have the ability to put in a session. Um, we can go ahead and actually uh, start to start to look at this. So when we generate a token, this this will be returned. Um, what we now want to do is inside of our register form, literally just say echo token generate. That will be returned to us because we are returning um, the value session put. Um, that's why we returned it in our session class. We're returning a token that will be output there and it will also be put into a session. So we have that in the user session that we can check. So let's go ahead and just refresh, uh, sorry, view the source of the page and you can see that we've got a token here. Now when I refresh, you can see that this value changes each time. So it's now unique to the users uh, the refreshing that page and this will be updated um, in the users uh, in the session to to reflect this as well so now that we've done this we need the ability to check if a token um, is you know exists or not so we also need the ability to uh, get a token from our session um, and check if it is the same as the token that's been defined in the form so um, let's go ahead and create another method called check and we want to pass in a token to check if this token exists in the session. Um, if the token equals the session that's currently um, been uh, applied, so the token that's been applied in the session, we want to then delete that session, uh, return true if that's the case. So um, in this case, what we want to do is just quickly say token name equals config get. session token name and then we want to uh, do a few things which means we're actually going to need to change our session uh, class a little bit and let's go ahead and write this code before we actually do anything so if session exists token name and the token that we've supplied to this form is equal to session get token name then we want to delete the session by token name and we want to return true otherwise we want to just return false if none of that works out so we're checking if the session exists with the token name that we've defined in our config. Um, we're then checking whether the token that's supplied to our check function or check method equals the session that's been stored by the user. So i.e. this basically just means does this value that's defined as well as all of the other form data equal the session uh, token that's been generated. Uh, an, an attacker won't know this token because it's been generated uniquely by a user. So uh, an attacker will not know this token value. Um, otherwise we delete the session. So we need to introduce three more methods, uh, not difficult methods to introduce at all. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do these. And let's uh, get rid of our input class as well. So in session, we need the ability to check if a, a particular session exists. So let's put this at the top. Public static function exists. So um, to check if a session exists, we need to take a name. And we need to return is, is set token name. So if the token is set, true, otherwise return false. Simple as that. The next thing we need to do is the ability to delete the token. This will again be a static method. This will be delete. Okay, so we now want to uh, also define a name, but we now want to refer back to whether this token actually exists or not, because we don't want to unset anything that doesn't exist. Uh, there's no need. So we can say if self exists name, then we want to unset dollar underscore session name. So we're basically unsetting it if it exists. 
fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, and we also want the ability to get a particular um, value as well. And this is, again, extremely straightforward. This functionality doesn't really require that much PHP knowledge. It requires very basic PHP knowledge. All we're doing is abstracting it so it's a lot easier to deal with. So to get a value, we're just going to return dollar underscore session name. That's literally it. So now our token class and our session class uh, can work together to to pull in things helpful helpful things that we need. So what we haven't done now is checked here to see if our token is is um, is good or not. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to say var dump um, token check um, and uh, on our on our register um, our register page we're just going to be saying input get token. So what we're doing now is let's just run through this because it is a tad confusing. We're grabbing the token from here, which has been set in a session already. So what we now have is we have a token in our source of our form. So we have this token and this token CA2 blah, 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 ending in five, nine is also set as a session for that user. What then happens is the user submits this form. We use token uh, check to pass in the token that's been supplied by the form. What token check then does is uh, checks if a session exists by with this token that's been set and that the token that we've supplied matches the session. So we're checking the token form in the form and the token in the session. If it does, we delete it because we don't need it anymore and we return true. And that means that cross-site request forgery has failed. So Let's go ahead and check this. There we go. I've supplied um, a username of Alex and it says bool false. So we now know that the session has, um, it, well, this has failed. So what we can now do is we can now incorporate the, this check into our, um, into our, the rest of our code. So what we can say is if else all the way down to here. Just indent this. In actual fact, no, we, we can get rid of this. We don't need to provide an, uh, an alternative. We can just say if the token exists or the token matches, or if the token check passes, then we'll, we'll go ahead and do, do what we want to do. Um, so, oh, sorry, we'll need to do that inside of the class beg your pardon. So let's get rid of this and if input exists and then if token check input get token. Now even if this input, uh, this token here doesn't exist this will still fail and therefore this won't work. So now what I'm going to do is using the same thing that we looked at earlier is hit enter um, and uh, oh yeah, of course, this has been input here. However, um, the rest of the code hasn't been hasn't been run. And let's just uh, quickly prove that. So I have been run. So I'm going to press enter, nothing happens. So despite the fact there is input available, nothing's been run. But when I click register, I have been run. And then we have the our validation output that we've looked at before. So we now have the ability to um, not have input passed here um, or in fact by post because we require the register button to be hit on the page with the correct token uh, there. So if this doesn't quite make sense, take a while to let this sink in and, and try and understand how this kind of works and why we do it. It is a concept that does take a little while to understand, but the fact that we're doing it um, really, really, you know, helps with security. It means that we can't, uh, that cross-site request forgery um, is made a lot more difficult um, than than it would be otherwise because we're not protecting against it at all. So, um, so yeah, that's that's basically 
you know how we protect against cross-site request forgery we've created our token class uh, utilizing some of the functionality in our session class uh, which we'll go on to next and um, and that's it we we've uh, secured our application to another level so we'll be using this this token um, method uh, or token class with its methods um, anywhere where we submit data uh, in our application